Yes. Mr Deputy Speaker, Mr Deputy Speaker, I would like to make a contribution to this debate and support the motion and acknowledge the important role that local media play in our communities. Uh, I have spoken on this matter before, so, and I don't wish to um, add, sorry, I only wish to add to what's already been said. I think the two previous speakers have covered the field very well. Uh, it's just disappointing that the member from McKillop, uh, while well, he's good to see you speaking in support of this motion, also voted for those changes to laws which actually take income away from uh, local media because uh, it doesn't require government departments to do so. So, on the one hand, I, can, I appreciate the fact you're speaking in support, which I think. No, no, he's acknowledging that. He's acknowledging it. He's, he's actually acknowledging that, unlike, you, so, unlike so, yourself. So, order, unlike order, yourself. Mem order. Yes. Member for Light, could you just take a seat for a moment? Thank you. Um, order in the chamber, please. Um, and I'd remind the Member for Light that he's just been reflecting on the vote of a House, in fact. So, please continue. It's reflected on the vote of an individual member, Mr. S Mr. Deputy Speaker. Well, no, uh, it's, you were reflecting on. Well, it was the vote of an individual member, but it was it was a bill before the House. So, continue on. Thank uh, you. Without referring to, or reflecting on the vote of a House. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Mr. Deputy Speaker, it's um, it's un it's unfortunate uh, that uh, the laws that they now stand uh, do not. Uh, uh, support this motion. It's sad. But, however, this motion is worthy of support. And what I wish to add is that, uh, unfortunately, uh, local media, has, I think, has been taken for, taken for granted and not really appreciated nor supported by uh, successive governments, I would add. Successive governments have not been supported. And it's good to see, though, that, uh, uh, as an industry, the industry is now actually fighting back to make sure that it does survive. And I referred to some uh, news research that's been undertaken uh, with the support of the Country Press Association of Australia, and it's uh, undertaken by Deakin University. They're doing a major research project in country papers, in, uh, particularly print media. And it's, uh, it's actually, the research is actually, uh, in, uh, the first part of this research actually is based on a survey, the Local Newspaper Audience Survey National Report 2021. Uh, and it's part of the Media Innovation and the Civic Future of Australia's Country Press project. And this uh, research, Mr Deputy Speaker, is very important because it does two things. One, it will talk about what people's expectations are from local media in their regional communities, country and regional communities. And secondly, what people think needs to be done to make sure we have a sustainable country press in, in, in Australia. Uh, Mr. Mr Deputy Speaker, when you go to uh, the, uh, the report itself, and I, just, and I will quote from the report, uh, and I think this, this, uh, this actual quote covers very well what I think is the importance of country press. Uh, when practised well, country journalism informs, educates and entertains a public that is often marginalised in favour of their big city counterparts. It contributes to a functioning local democracy and public sphere, creates a shared sense of community and fulfils a watching role by providing a check and balance on institutions such as local government, courts, churches, schools and police. I think, Mr. S Mr. Deputy Speaker, that uh, <coughs> quote from that report covers very well uh, what I think country media do, what the role country media play. And I should say, in addition to print media, we also have country uh, radio stations, both uh, community and, pay and, and for profit. In, in my own area, in terms of print media, uh, my area is covered by the Plains producer, uh, Balaclava, the Bunyip base at Gawler, the leader, which is based in Angerston. Uh, we also have, uh, I think we still have, the Brosser Herald, which is part of the country, uh, Australian country media. Uh, it, it, it's on because it's online and, and, and it's only published occasionally online. Certainly the print media doesn't, uh, uh, the print media version is not been available for some time. Uh, we also have community radio, Triple B FM, at, based in Europe. And uh, Mr. Speaker, that uh, uh, this, this research, which actually undertaken, uh, under, uh, there was a survey of 4,200 readers of the local newspaper readers from semi-rural uh, or peri-urban regional and country South Australia. And a couple, made a number of findings, but a couple of the findings which I think are really important and instructive are as follows. It's interesting that the audiences believe that local newspapers should be collaboratively funded by a range of relevant stakeholders to ensure their future. It's interesting that our community believes 
that uh, you know, obviously the advertisers have played a role, the readers have played a role, the owner, paper, newspaper owners have played a role, but also governments have a played a, a role to play to ensure uh, that how local medias do survive. And by that role, Mr Speaker, is the role to actually perhaps to provide advertising dollars. As a number of country press operators have said, the, um, the uh, governments of the day are more than happy to uh, uh, have local newspapers print their media releases and when they come out, as the member McKinnon said, cover their um, uh, media events, etc., take photographs. But when it comes to actually ensuring that the paper's there for next week, the week after, the week after, they are now no longer prepared to put the money as advertising dollars. And it's important. It's, not, it's important because of all the functions that country press play. It's interesting also the audiences of this survey said overwhelmingly indicate that additional funding for local news should be directed to employ more local journalists to report news uh, over increasing digital connectivity and digital innovations. In other words, people say that there still is a strong preference of a print media over digital media. And, and the reality is a lot of people cannot actually access digital media. Mr Speaker, it is clear from the research being undertaken that people in the country areas and regional areas do appreciate and value their country papers. Uh, but re reality is, like uh, newspapers right across the country, not only in uh, local areas but also in those metropolitan papers, the advertising dollar is getting harder and harder <coughs> and finding it harder to survive. Mr. S Mr Deputy Speaker, though, as a parliament, we need to make sure that we protect our local democracies, make, making sure that governments of the day do provide support uh, to our local uh, newspapers uh, to make sure they actually are able to do all those things. And when I undertake some research about my own community of 50, 100 years ago, 150 years ago, where do I go? I go to my local papers to see uh, what is the history of an event, what, is, what happened in those days, in those times, and they actually are an important uh, journal of record, not only for, for political news or local government news, but in terms of all the other things which actually are important to local communities, uh, school events, church events, um, deaths, uh, deaths, births and marriages, all those things uh, which are important to local communities. And local newspapers, Mr Deputy Speaker, help keep our communities connected and, importantly, uh, keep all of us accountable. With those few comments, Mr Speaker, I would certainly support uh, the motion, uh, and without reflecting on a previous decision of this parliament, draw the members' attention to that we need to do more. We need to do more to ensure that, uh, uh, and we can do more to ensure that our country papers uh, stay in print. Uh, and, Mr. Speaker, that I think that uh, it would be a sad day if we lost our country papers, and sadly, uh, we've actually lost about 200 papers across the, the nation over the last year or so. Uh, though most of those were owned by the Murdoch Press and other big um, media outlets. But in my own, my own town of Gawler, we did lose the Bunyip for two weeks, and it was, a, it was only two weeks, but it was a, a sense of great loss. And fortunately, uh, community action uh, did bring the paper back of only, after only two weeks. But some papers have disappeared, uh, not to return, and, and the, those communities are the poorer for that. Mr Speaker, I would certainly support the motion. Member for Chafer. 